Hello, everyone, and welcome to the At My Voice Facebook Live event in celebration of Mental Health Week. My name is Zoe, and I'll be your MC for today's event. I'm a virtual counselor for the Family Information Line, and I also grew up in a military family, both my parents uh, being now veterans. It is therefore my pleasure to host this event for military families. Before we start, I'd like to acknowledge that we are holding our event in Ottawa today on unceded Algonquin and Anishinaabe territory. We honor its land and its people. Today, we will be hearing from Strongest Families, Kids Help Phone, and the Family Information Line on what type of services the organization can offer to military families. A few housekeeping items before we welcome our speakers. If you would like to ask a question to any of our speakers, please leave them in the Facebook Live feed or send us a Facebook private message. Additionally, since we are streaming this Facebook Live through Zoom, there will be around a 20 second delay. Therefore, there might be a delay in us getting to your questions. Today's session will be in English, but you're welcome to ask any of your questions or make any comments in French or in English. We'll also be hosting a French version of this event um, of this live event. Donc, si vous ou quelqu'un que vous connaissez est intéressé à une version française de cet événement, nous organiserons un autre Facebook en direct la semaine prochaine, le 14 mai, de 11h à midi, sur le groupe Facebook Ma Voix. So let's get started. First, we welcome Elizabeth Hine, Coaching Services Director at Strongest Family. Hi, Elizabeth. Thank you so much for being with us today. Hi, Zoe. Thanks so how much. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good. Um, so why don't you start off uh, by telling us what Strongest Family is? Sure, yeah. Um, thanks for having us today. Um, I, my, like Zoe said, I'm the Coaching Services Director at the Strongest Families Institute. Um, I've been helping to oversee our military department for uh, the last six or seven years, and I'm also a military spouse and military family member myself, so I'm excited to be here today and to talk to you folks a little bit about uh, the services that Strongest Families has to offer. So Strongest Families is a nonprofit distance mental health organization. And so we offer phone-based services to clients and to families to help them overcome some mental health challenges that they might be facing, especially around behavior and anxiety concerns. We are an evidence-based program, and so we're rooted in years and years of research, and our highly trained coaches are really experts in helping families to problem solve around some of the challenges that they might be facing. Strongest Families is really designed to help families when and where they need it. So we work to remove some of the barriers that families can sometimes face when reaching out for help. So to do that, we work at times that are convenient for families. We offer sessions uh, in the morning or the afternoon or the evening. So that means that there's no time for families to, uh, no need rather for families to take time off work or take kids out of school to participate in the programs. We can really work uh, around your schedule. So as the slide talks about here, we offer three primary streams of programming to clients and families. The first it mentions is our behavior program. So this is a program for parents with children aged three to 12, and it focuses on uh, generalized behavior concerns. So things like arguing and talking back, temper tantrums, routine issues, um, aggression or conduct concerns. And this program is really a positive parenting program. It's gonna teach strategies about coping with some of those challenges and really focus on um, positive relationship building. The second stream of programming we offer is around anxiety, uh, and we have programs for children, youth, and adults who are uh, coping with some anxiety concerns. That program focuses on uh, coping strategies and relaxation strategies, uh, as well as exposure. So kind of identifying the areas where anxiety is impacting a child or a youth or an adult's day-to-day -day life and helping to have them slowly work to overcome some of those challenges. Um, and the third program that we offer is around bedwetting. So that's for parents with children age five to 12. And that program uses a urine alarm um, and some milestones to help uh, families uh, with nighttime only bedwetting concerns to, to overcome some of those, those, those challenges as well. Families have access to complete more than one of these programs They can, if they have multiple needs. Uh, we almost always encourage families to complete the behavior programs first if that is one of the concerns before moving on to some of the other ones where the children uh, or youth might be a little bit more involved. 
As I mentioned, all of the Strongest Families programs are completed over the phone. So we have a, a group of coaches and you would meet weekly with a coach to go through one skill-based session per week. And our coaches that work with military and veteran families receive some additional training on problem solving around some of the unique challenges and transitions that we know that military families can face more often perhaps than their civilian counterparts. For most of our programs, there are, is an option to complete the program one on one just between to do those phone calls just with uh, yourself and a coach one on one. And we also have some group based options as well. Uh, it's still a phone based program where families or clients would call in to a toll free line. So there's no cost for them and speak with a group of other clients who are experiencing some similar challenges. Uh, we get such positive feedback from those group based sessions, especially now. Now in the midst of COVID, where making those kind of social connections can be a little bit harder. Uh, it's often really powerful to hear that you're not alone in some of the challenges that you're facing and are able to make connections and to share some of those tips and tricks, what's working and what's not with other families. Military, veteran, and reserve families from all across Canada, as well as those posted with OutCan, have access to the Strongest Families program at no cost. And uh, Strongest Families has helped uh, almost 750 families now from across Canada and around the world. We continue to see really great successes for both civilian and military families. Um, in general, SFI has a greater than 85% outcome success rate. So we know that families accessing these programs, uh, seeing some of these challenges in their day-to-day -day life uh, are, are really seeing overwhelming success as they, as they move their way through the programs. If you're interested in accessing Strongest Families programs for yourself, the route is fairly easy for military and veteran families. Um, there's a couple of ways that you can access the program. Uh, you can be referred from your local MFRC uh, by talking to any of the staff there, or you can call Strongest Families directly, the numbers there on the slide, um, and reach out to our team directly and self-refer to one of the programs and they can give you a little bit more information. Um, we certainly know that uh, uh, we have lots of families from across the country accessing accessing the program. Uh, like I said, with those those appointments, morning, afternoon, or evening available all across the country. So um, we really do want to make it as easy as possible for families to access the help that they might be that they might need when and where they need it. Um, the last thing I'll point you to on this particular slide before I kind of toss it back over to Zoe to see if there are any questions um, is just a quote from a military family there at the bottom of the slide who mentioned that they were preparing for an upcoming deployment um, and really kind of struggling and noted that, uh, that after accessing the program through the MFRC, they really saw some incredible changes uh, over in their, in their family and over, over the course of that short couple of months. Any any questions that have popped up? Yeah, so a few of them. Um, how long um, are the programs? Sure. Um, I know you mentioned a few different programs, but usually how, how long are they? Yeah, so the, the programs range anywhere from eight to 12 weeks. Um, so the some of the uh, anxiety programs are a little bit shorter. Some of the behavior programs are a little bit longer. Um, so in general, about eight to 12 weeks. Awesome. And can more than one parent um, or ca caregiver participate? Mm -hmm. We always say the more the merrier on those phone awesome. calls with the coaches. We certainly know that change can happen much faster uh, when everybody is on board and, and on the same page. So we encourage all caregivers, uh, if possible, to be on those weekly phone calls. We do look for one primary caregiver who's going to be on every single call so things don't get lost in translation along the way. But the more the merrier. Oh, that's great. I love to hear that. And uh, what about children or youth with additional needs or diagnosis? Sure. Um, any of those kind of comorbidities, things like autism spectrum disorder, um, fetal alcohol syndrome, uh, even medical comorbidities like diabetes or epilepsy, things that may be impacting a family's day-to-day -day life are almost always a good fit for the program. Um, and if, you, if families ever have any questions about whether or not they are a good fit, again, I would encourage you to read out to our team uh, the number at the number that's there on the, the screen. Uh, we'd be happy to talk through uh, any other programs and how they work um, if, if you're not sure if Strongest Families might be a good fit.
Awesome. And I think you mentioned a bit, but what do families think of your program? What do military families think of your program, really? Yeah, we're, we're really, really proud of the work that we've done with military families over the years. Um, we started working directly with military families in about 2014. It started as kind of a pilot project, working our way to see if we could get those referrals sort of directly through MFRCs and working directly with military families. So we're incredibly proud of the work uh, that we've done and the connections that we've made and seeing more and more families know about Strongest Families and access these services. Uh, like I mentioned, in general, we have a greater than 85% outcome success rate and we continually see uh, quotes like, like I shared there on that screen from families who have seen really incredible changes in their family dynamic and their family relationships uh, in a relatively short amount of time, eight to 12 weeks uh, in, in, a, in a short kind of amount of time to see such dramatic changes. Our coaches are really, really incredible people and their whole goal is to work with families to hear what their individual challenges are and to be sure that we're problem solving within the needs of those those unique family situations and we know for military and veteran families those situations can be unique and can can throw a curveball for sure like I said we're I'm part of that community too we know that changes can happen uh, at the last minute and so our coaches are are really proud of the work that they do and able really to hone in on the individual issues and and concerns that a family might be having and help them to to problem solve in ways that are really going to be effective for them to overcome some of those challenges. Great. Well, thank you so much, Elizabeth, for all this information. And we really appreciate all that you do for military families. Thanks so much. Um, next, we have Andréane Deschamps, um, Associate Vice President, Service Programs. Um, hi, Andréane. Thank you so much for being with us today. Hi, thank you for having me. I have a PowerPoint that I'd like to share as well. Awesome. Great. So yeah, why don't you start off uh, telling us a bit about uh, Kids Help Phone? Absolutely. Um, thank you for having me. Um, I myself also being um, a military family member, my dad being a veteran, um, I am, understand um, the importance of having virtual support care for young people across Canada available 24-7. And that is exactly what Kids Help Phone does for young people across Canada. So we offer 24-7 bilingual English and French resources and supports for young people at any given time of day, anywhere, anyhow they, they need us most. So we offer a few different services and I, I'd like to talk more about our crisis text line today, um, but I will say that at any time if a young person wants phone support or chat support, we have a counseling service that is available to them. We also offer a lot of resources on our website. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult um, if you're feeling shy, you're not quite sure how to be asking for help, what, how you should they say things. We have a number of resources on our website that can help um, in terms of just getting information. Is what I'm feeling okay? What are some of the words that I could be using to help myself express what it is that I'm feeling inside and I can't quite put into words right now? So we have resources that are topic-based, that are emotion-based, that are healing-based, um, quizzes and questionnaires sometimes just to get an, an understanding of what it is that I'm feeling and maybe what, what is described there is actually exactly the way that I'm feeling and now I have the words to, um, to share that with someone in my, um, in my surroundings. We also have um, a really great tool that is called RAM. It's resources around me where a young person, if they wanna have access to community-based support, they can go on resources around me and find those community supports uh, wherever they are in Canada. Um, if they wanna be reaching out by themselves to a service in their communities. We also have um, our crisis text line that I will talk to on our next slide. So our crisis text line support um, began in 2018, where we said we need to do something that is text-based because that is where young people are nowadays. They're all on their phone. They're texting with each other. They may not feel comfortable calling us. So how do we get to them? So we launched Crisis Text Line um, powered by Kids Help Phone, which is a way for young people anywhere in Canada, they do not need to have um, uh, a data plan to reach us. They can just use their phone and talk with a crisis responder. It's, a compl it's completely free 
and confidential support for young people, um, whether they're children. Uh, we have young kids um, reaching out to us on their phone. It's one of the ways sometimes where they feel more comfortable just reaching out and even just asking a couple of questions. Uh, youth, but also young adults uh, who are reaching out through, um, through this uh, service that we offer. All right, we can go to the next slide. Thank you. So I will walk a little bit into how does it work. So all you need is your phone and a young person uh, from a military family who would like to reach out to help, they have to, um, to text in to 686868. So six numbers, quite repetitive, 686868. They type that in and they write CAF kids, C-A-F kids. And within one to five minutes, but we're closer to one minute, they will be matched with a crisis responder who will be live with them um, to, to support them in whatever they're feeling. So our crisis support is really for any young person, they don't have to be in crisis. Even though it's crisis text line, a young person who's just, you know what, I'm there's something that's going on, I'm starting to struggle with it. They don't have to be in crisis to reach out for support. We are there for anything that a young person might be feeling, whether it's really big or it feels tiny. Um, for us, it doesn't matter. We're just really have, uh, glad that we can be there to support young people in whatever they're facing. So a young person will, as I mentioned, will type in CAF kids to 686868 and they will be matched with one of our crisis responders will, who will ask them, how are you doing? What's going on? Are you safe? And how can we help you feel better in the moment? The service is really about making sure that when we end the conversation with you, um, that the young person is feeling better and that they know some of the next steps that they could do to keep feeling that way and help them feel empowered in the situation and know where they're going and what else they could be doing uh, in the moment to help themselves. We can go to the next slide. One of the things that we um, that we do and that we believe in as Kids Health Phone is always making sure that our services are tailored to the needs of young people. And to do that, we have to ask them questions. So after a young person will text in to Crisis Text Line, we will send them an optional survey to ask them, how was your experience? We want to know, share with us what's going on and how can we improve? And from that survey, we know that about 82% of young people after one conversation, we're talking anywhere between 15 minutes to 40 minutes. One conversation, 82% of young people feel, felt less alone, distressed, and actually more hopeful about their situation. And that is the power of just having that one conversation and feeling supported. Um, so we know the service works um, and we're always listening to young people to figure out, is it still working in the way that you need it to? We also know from that survey that 58% of young people told us about situations and feelings that they had never shared with anyone else. Young people are at their first experience of really difficult things like breakups and relationships and sometimes even moving, um, having to go from one city to a completely new province and new friends and new environments. And we know that sometimes talking to people about it it feels odd, they don't always know what to say. And we also often hear young people say, well, I think they they might judge me or it's not important enough. And having that initial text base, so it's a little bit further removed, you don't have to say it out loud, you say it in your words through text, sometimes it's less challenging. It provides some people with an opportunity to talk about a lot of first time issues and build that confidence in being able to say, well, if I can tell it to someone and I'm well received, then that probably means that I can tell it to others in my community that will be there to support me. So we know it works and this is why we also encourage and want to make sure that young people know that the service is available to them. One last thing that I wanted to share is that about over 50% of our service users are between the ages of 14 and 24, but about 15 to 20% are under 13. So even the younger kids are starting to reach out, they're using their cell phones to make sure that, um, you know, if they have a question, there's something that, that's going on and it's bothering them and they're reaching out to us. So there is no wrong age to seek help. And this is why Crisis Text Line has been made to be as available as we can um, to young people and families across Canada, because it is a resource that they can use 24 seven, any time of day and at any point, if they want to stop the conversation, they can always write stop and then the conversation ends. They don't have to go into the details of why 
And then if they need some help two days later, a week later, a month later, a year later, we will be there to support them at any time. There's no, um, there are no fees, but there's also no limitations on access as well to our crisis text line service. So to finish, um, and wanted to make sure that the information is there and is available, um, any young person can text CAF Kids to 686868. We also have a brand new access point, which is Facebook Messenger, which a lot of young people are also on. Um, so in if they're using their phone or their computer in the Messenger app at the top bar where you can search for people or organizations, all they have to do is search for Crisis Text Line powered by Kids Health Home click on us and then they will be matched again with a crisis responder directly to talk about whatever's on their mind. Thank you. Awesome. It's, it's nice to see that you're pivoting to um, platforms that youth are using. I think that's really awesome. Um, a few questions. Uh, are the people answering um, the, the kids' messages, are they volunteer or are they professionals? Oh, Andrian, you're just muted. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. You think that after a year, we, I'd be used I to know, it. I know, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, so our phone and chat services, our professional counseling services are um, through professional counselors. Our crisis text line are trained uh, volunteers. They go through a rigorous 36-hour training, and every conversation that is happening in real time is supervised by a team of uh, professional supervisors who oversee all of the conversations to make sure that we're providing the best care to young people and making sure that if ever a young person is in distress and needs immediate support they will also making uh, making the connection with emergency services when required awesome that sounds great and what are the top concerns um, young people share with you Hmm. That's a very good question. Um, COVID shifted a little bit some of the conversations that we've been mm -hmm. having with young people. Um, anxiety has been really, really high on the list of concerns of young people feeling um, and expressing that they're going through and um, a lot of anxiety. What we're also hearing uh, through anxiety conversations is it's not just the fact that they're experiencing, experiencing anxiety, but it's the fact that some of the things that they used to do to manage their anxiety is no longer available to them. So yeah. they're not figuring out how to cope with their feelings in ways um, that are new to them. And we're getting that, um, young people are expressing that and, and sharing that with us and trying to figure out that new balance um, and being able to manage their feelings. They also talk a lot about the isolation um, that they're feeling through the pandemic. Um, and we have a lot of conversations related to uh, depression, but also, and unfortunately, abuse that they're, uh, that they're experiencing or that they're witnessing um, from friends or family members. And um, is the service confidential? Absolutely. It is not anonymous. So we do have um, the ability to see the young person's uh, contact information if they are in, emer in an emergency situation. Mm -hmm. A young person doesn't tell us that they need immediate support or they're not at risk of harming themselves or someone else, um, then that information we actually don't use and we don't look at. Um, so the conversation will be completely confidential um, and we want to look at the information unless we really need to call emergency services to support them in the moment. Good, that's important. And um, can you refer a child to supports in their communities, depending, I guess, where they are in the country, of course, yeah. Absolutely. Um, Kids Health One has the largest um, youth focused um, database in Canada around what are the community services for young people. Um, at any time, if a young person wants to reach out through any of our services, including Crisis Text Line, and is looking for a resource in their community, we can help them search um, throughout all of our database. If they don't want to be talking to someone yet, but they want to do that search by themselves, they can also go on our website on resources around me, where we will help them through a couple of questions around where are you at, what are you looking for, and we will provide them with a list of resources that is available to them. Awesome. That's awesome. That's great. Um, so thank you so much, Andriane, for informing us about all this great stuff that Kids Help Phone uh, does for military families. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Um, and lastly, we welcome Christina Cupidon, virtual counselor from the Family Information Line. Hi, Christina. How are you? 
Hi, Zoe. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm great. Um, so thank you for being with us today. Um, so what is the Family Information Line? Yeah, sure. So the Family Information Line is um, a service from, um, we're part of the Military Family Services. Uh, we are trained counseling professionals. So anytime you call, whoever answers, we are trained counselors. Uh, who are there to listen, who's there, who are there to understand, be compassionate, but mostly, you know, we understand the military lifestyle. And so it's one of the uh, important things for us. Uh, what we do uh, as well is we offer support, we offer, we do referrals. So if you call us, we don't have the answer for you right away, or we don't necessarily, uh, or, you know, it's not us who provides that service. We will ref refer you out to the community where you are on base, where there is the CFF, uh, MFRC, sorry, whether it's PSP, whether it's CEFMAP, whatever it is, we will refer you to, to um, the proper organization that is able to help you out. Uh, we do, of course, reassurance. So we have one-time callers. We have uh, callers who call us just for one time and just needs to talk for that moment. They're going through something and, you know, they need to call. So we're there for that as well. Uh, we do crisis management, uh, crisis intervention, you know, clients that, again, they're going through something right away. They need to talk right now. We are there as well for that. Um, and we serve the military members, of course, but their families. And by families, we mean like literally everyone. <laughs> so, um, you know, a brother, sister, cousin, sister-in-law, brother, like whatever it is, we are there for you. This is what we do. Okay. So um, our service is pretty personal. Uh, you know, it's anonymous as well. So you don't have to give you give us your name. You don't have to give us anything. You can just call and just literally start talking and, we'll, and we will answer you and be there for you. Uh, we are a confidential. Um, so anything that is said stays between you and the counselor that you talk to, of course, unless you are a danger to yourself or to others um, and children. Um, we are bilingual. Uh, so all our counselors are bilingual. So we speak French and English and it is a free service, which is pretty great. Um, the other part of what we do is we do virtual counseling. So at FIL, we do um, virtual counseling uh, through the phone or virtually, and we do it from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. So from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m., you will find someone on the line. And then after 11, it it's, we're still open, but we go to another service. Um, the virtual counseling are sessions that you book with the same counselor. And then you, we can talk to you uh, every week. We can talk to you every two weeks, every month. Whatever it is that you need, we deliver it. Okay, so we go at your own pace. We go with the, the, the needs that you have. And we follow what, like, we follow your guidance. We're there for you. Okay, so what we do in the sessions, it's emotional support. It's, uh, you know, we problem solve with you. We give you tools that we, you know, that we're able to give you. And we definitely do information and referral as well. So we have some clients, for example, that they start with us and then they finish with CEFMAP, for example, because they think, you know what, I need to go a little bit deeper. Um, and so I'm going to go with CEFMAP, for example. Okay, so... Um, what, like, you know, who finds the uh, family information line useful or our counseling sessions? For example, it's those who are not close to MFRCs um, or those who want to remain anonymous. Because like I said, you can literally call us and start talking without giving us your name and, your name and we're not going to ask you it for, for it. Um, if you can't find, you know, help outside business hours, because some, sometimes, you know, people work like different hours so it's always good to have someone that you know okay their schedule is pretty flexible and also when you can't get help in your first language as well so that's basically it in terms of fil um and yeah awesome thank you so much for all that information one question do you need to be in crisis to call the family information line so you don't need to be in crisis to call the, the family information line. You can call the family information line anytime. Um, it can be whether you're in crisis or not. If you just need to talk, if you just need an information, uh, if you have a question and you don't necessarily know where to start, 
you know, where to start looking or you started looking where you're not sure where to go, then you can call us as well. So it's no, you don't have to be in crisis to call us. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Christina, for all this great information about the family no information line. Yeah, we actually have a question um, in the chat. And I thought that um, whoever wants to pick up the question can answer. And it's, I would love to see support programs for children who have lost a parent, a group that sadly often gets um, overlooked. So I don't know if um, Elizabeth, Andriana, or Christina, if you have any comments or an answer to that question. I can. Um, Great, thank you. Uh, grief, um, young people going through grief is an important conversation to have and often young people don't necessarily find the words. Um, at any point, if a young person wants to be able to call in or text a crisis text line, um, it is an, you know, the loss of a parent or grief of a family member is something that we are happy to support with. Um, we also have a new service um, that is going to launch I believe it's an end of June, early July, which is a peer-to-peer -peer service in which um, young people from military families will also have a space in that service uh, because we also know that there can be that, you know, counselor or adult um, child support that is important, but there's also immense value in young people being able to support each other and share those experience, those common experiences that we have. Um, so although it's not quite to build out yet, it is launching soon and I do wanna share that it will be a service that's available for young people to be able to get ongoing support from a community of young people who have or are going through similar situations such as grief or loss of a parent. Awesome, thank you so much, Andriane. Um, did anyone have anything to add to that question? I think Elizabeth. Sure. Was, yeah, I was yeah. I was double muted there for a second. Yeah. <laughs> um, sure. I'll just echo um, exactly what Andrean has said. Um, it's wonderful to hear about uh, about some of those services and uh, a wonderful and important question and comment that was that was asked as well. Um, from a strongest families perspective, uh, we completely agree that support for uh, young people who are who have experienced some some trauma and are kind of navigating a new uh, path is incredibly important and so from our perspective anything that we can offer for youth who are experiencing ongoing anxiety due to the um, death or injury of a loved one and how they kind of navigate their day-to-day -day and how we can help the um, remaining family relationship is definitely something um, that we'd be happy to explore and and offer some some support with as well great thank you so much elizabeth yeah um zoe yeah yeah, I can also add, um, awesome. you, you know, any family members, including children, are welcome to reach out to Family Information Line anytime. Uh, not only do we have experience working with families around the grief or, you know, losing a loved one, uh, but we also have several uh, referral options as well for support. Okay, so um, reach out at FIL anytime. Um, and yeah. Great, thank you so much for answering that question. Um, so yeah, so I'd like to thank um, all of our speakers, um, Elizabeth, Andrian, and Christina for sharing what their, or their, or sorry, their organizations can offer to military families. Um, and also thank you everyone who joined us and who participated. Um, our session will be available on the At My Voice Facebook page if you'd like to review. Um, and again, if anyone um, you know or yourself would be interested in a French version of this event, we will be holding another Facebook Live next week on May 14th from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time on the At My Voice uh, Facebook group. Uh, so thank you, everyone, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.